Hello there, welcome along. This is another tip tutorial from tipsquirrel.com. I was reminded of this a couple of weeks ago when a friend of mine asked me to help him put a rainbow onto a photograph. Now he'd had several tries using the pen tool and the shape tool and all manner of tools with no real success. But there's a very easy way of doing it and that's what I'd like to share with you today. Now I should remind you that I'm not a Photoshop trainer but I do like to share the tips that I've collected along my way. Okay, what I've done is I've created another document. Now you'll see I'm viewing this one at 100%. This is where I want the rainbow to be. And I'm going to open my other document, which is just a blank document, but it's twice the size of the document that I'm going to eventually have the rainbow on. And you'll see I'm viewing this at 50%. So it looks the same size, but in fact it's twice the size. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer on this document and using the rectangular marquee tool I'm going to create a rectangular marquee and then using the gradient tool I'm going to choose the gradient that I'm after now it's this one here which is a cool transparent rainbow which is exactly what the one I want of course I could also choose it from pulling down the menu there and clicking just there okay now coming over to my document I hold down the shift key click at the top of the marquee and drag straight down. Shift keeps it nice and straight, which once the gradient's been done, we'll have all our colors all nice and straight as well. Control and D to deselect our marquee. Now what I want to do is I want to make that into a nice rainbow shape. Well, an arc is just a part of a circle, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this into a circle. Go filter. I'm going to distort and then I'm going to polar coordinates and here I want rectangular to polar and if I just come out of that you can see exactly what's going to happen if I had polar to rectangular then look at that very interesting effect you can get from this but there's the one I want rectangular to polar and I click OK and there is our rainbow now you're probably already another six stages ahead of me already cascade those documents and with the move tool just click and drag it over and there we go we have our rainbow in place now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mask off the bits of the rainbow that I don't want uh, but to do that first what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the the mask on this layer just click the new mask icon here and then holding down the alt key I'm going to select filter and then render and clouds now having the alt key held down will make these clouds quite uh, different as you can see I'm holding the alt key while I click on the mask here so we can just see the mask and you can see it's very bright and dark so a lot of contrast in there okay click on that with the alt key again and you can see we've got this kind of smoky cloudy kind of effect going through it but I'm going to choose the brush and then I'm just going to paint away using black the parts that I don't want. Okay, and there we go. Now I'm going to go to a much bigger brush just so that I can nick away some of those rather perfect edges. And there we go. There's our rainbow. I can reduce the opacity of that quite considerably. And there we have a nice rainbow effect and if I wanted to move the uh, the the clouds around I could have taken away the the link there and moved them till I found a better one but I was quite happy with with the clouds that I had across the top of the rainbow but now we've got a nice rainbow we've got dark clouds but everything's too bright so let's do something about that I'm going to have a curves layer in there and just drop that down a bit so it's nice and dark and there's far too much colour in there for a nice rainy day, such as we're making. So we're going to take down the hue saturation a bit. Now, we've got sunshine, we need a bit of rain. So click on the rainbow layer, which I'm going to name, because I do like to have my layers named. And above that, I'm going to click the new layer icon, fill that with my foreground colour, which I use alt and backspace, and then filter noise add noise and you can see that I'm using Gaussian monochromatic I click OK that's nice and speckled but now filter oops, excuse me filter blur motion blur will give us our rain and you can see the the more blur you have the 
more it looks like it's raining, but we don't want it raining too much. We'll have a, a nice English drizzle. There we go. Now, if we put this layer into screen, it takes away the black, leaves the white. We can drop down the opacity. And we could actually put that into multiply. And you see it just drops it right the way down. And just bring that down there and just change it a little bit. But let's stick with screen. Maybe a bit too bright. I don't know. But there we go. We've got the, the rain coming in as well. Now, I'm going to do the same trick as before. I'm going to add a layer mask and then filter without the old key this time. Filter render clouds just to give it a bit of uh, randomness to it you can't really notice it that much but if i shift and click on the the mask and take it away you can see it does make a, a bit of a difference it just takes away that uniformness of the rain to start with and there we go i'm going to bring the opacity back up a bit so you can see the rain a bit more and the rainbow down a bit now somebody once told me the greatest trick of Photoshop is to know when to stop. And that's one of the things I'm yet to learn. So I apologize that I do just keep fiddling. OK, I'm going to leave it there. All right. So we we're really talking about the rainbow. All I did was if I go into my history is to create a new layer, rectangular marquee, put a gradient on it, deselect the gradient and then the polar coordinates to make it into a circle and then just dropped it onto our main document. And there we have our rainbow.